Mr. Williams, how was your trip? Did your Plymouth behave all right, Mr. Williams? Fine. It ran like a dream, Jack. You should have seen this baby perform on hills. And when we hit Chicago, I got away from lights faster than anyone in the city. But, uh, say, I've got one complaint I want to talk to you about, young fella. What's that? Fuel economy. Here, take a look at this gas mileage record I made. I got an average of 13 miles a gallon for the trip. And I know I get less than 10 in the city. Well, that's not what I call good mileage. Gosh, Mr. Williams, there must be something wrong. Boy, I wish our service manager could check your car. He's really sharp. Okay, Jack. You've been asking me to bring my car to your place for service for a long time. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be down there at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if your boys can fix this car up, you've got a customer. And he says he had a tune-up just before he took the trip, Joe. The way she runs, I don't see how there could be anything mechanically wrong. He'll be here soon, Joe. Suppose we give Jack the high points on fuel economy while we're waiting. Well, Jack, there are lots of things about a car that influence gas mileage. But there's one thing that's more important than anything else. The driver. The driver? That's right, Jack. Look at it this way. An engine gets its gas from the carburetor. And the carburetor is controlled by the accelerator. And who controls the accelerator, my boy? Why, the driver, of course. Correct, Jack. So with cars that are kept in top condition, it's strictly up to the driver to see that he gets good mileage. It's just like tending a furnace, Jack. The fireman is the man who has the most to do with wasting coal. If he pours on coal, regardless of the weather outside, then he'll have to open the windows and waste all that heat warming up the neighborhood. You see, Jack, that's like a driver who gives it the gun when the light turns green and then has to slam on the brakes and waste all that power at the next red light. Right, Tech. And then there's this hotshot speed demon. He's just like the man who keeps the temperature in his house up to around 80 all the time. It's not only wasteful, but it can be downright unhealthy in both cases. How about the driver who stays in the lower gears too long? That's something like overdrafting a fire. You're burning out the fire while the heat goes up the flue. Yes, Jack, our cars have plenty of extra power when you need it. But a wise driver, like a wise fireman, doesn't use that power wastefully. So, there they are. Fast starts and stops, high speed, lingering and low gears. The three big reasons why gas is wasted. I see, but how can we be sure that it's the driver and not the car that causes the waste? Ah, there's where the mileage tester comes in, Jack. What will that show? The gas tester will let Mr. Williams decide for himself whether his car is all right or if his driving habits are wasting gas. Uh-oh. Somebody's at the door. And now, Mr. Williams, we'll use this gas mileage tester to check the fuel consumption of your Plymouth. It's the most accurate way we have of measuring gas mileage. Oh, how does it work? Well, it's a glass jar which holds exactly one-tenth of a gallon of gas between these two marks. First, we connect it between the gas tank and the fuel pump. And then, we measure the distance your car will run on that tenth of a gallon of gas. When we multiply by ten, we get the fuel consumption of your car in miles per gallon. You'll see how it works during the test. Are you ready to go, Mr. Williams? Sure, let's go. But say, do you mind if we take Jack with us? I want him to see for himself how bad the mileage is. Okay, you get in the back seat, Jack. Why don't you sneak in here and help me out, Jack? Sure, Jack. Maybe I can give you a few pointers. We use this stretch of highway for the test because it's level and there aren't any sharp curves or crossroads to slow down for. Now, during the test, Mr. Williams, try to drive at a steady 30 miles an hour. In other words, don't speed up or slow down once you're at 30, okay? Sure, fine. Let me know when you're right on the 30-mile mark. And when I say start, give me the last two mileage figures on the speedometer. Okay, I'm doing 30. All right, 
start. What's the figure? Mm, the mileage is uh, 6.2, Joe. Okay, Mr. Williams. Hmm. You know, this business of keeping right on 30 is harder than you'd think. Sure it is. But it's important because every time you speed up or slow down, you affect your gas mileage. Get set to watch that speedometer again, Mr. Williams. Ready? Read it. It reads 8.2, Joe. Let's see, 8.2 minus 6.2. That's two miles we covered on a tenth of a gallon. Yeah, but say, two miles on a tenth means we're actually getting 20 miles on a full gallon. Well, that's mighty good mileage, Joe. Yes, and we may do even better on the way back, Mr. Williams. Oh, you mean we have to run the course again? Well, don't you figure you can keep that needle on 30 better with another try? <laughs> you bet I can. Well, let's turn around and get going. You always want to make the run both ways, Jack, so driver habits and things like the wind don't spoil your test. Could that make much difference? Why, it could push your head or slow you down enough to change your mileage five miles a gallon or more. There you are. This time we got 22 miles per gallon. So, averaging 20 and 22, you get 21 miles per gallon for highway driving on this Plymouth. Gosh, that's amazing. Why, look here, Joe. How in the world did we get 21 miles a gallon on this test when I only got 13 on my trip? Well, Mr. Williams, for one thing, your mileage figures depended on how well the gas station attendants filled your tank. No two of them will do it quite the same. And then again, your trip figures included idling time and start and stop mileage and other driving conditions that pull your average way down. To get accurate results, you've got to handle your car in a very special way. Remember, on this test, you drove your car at 30 miles an hour. But didn't you drive faster than that on your trip? Why, sure. I had her almost wide open a couple of times, and she rode smooth as a cloud. High speeds have a big effect on gas mileage, Mr. Williams. It might surprise you to know you get about half the mileage at 80 that you do at 30. Right as rain, Jack. A test that shows 21 miles per gallon at 30 will show only 11 miles per gallon at 80. And while we get a refill on this record, folks, cast your eye over this mileage chart. Another thing, Mr. Williams, you kept steady pressure on the accelerator on the test, no sudden bursts of speed. But uh, do any of us drive that way on a trip? Gosh, I guess not, Joe. Now that I think of it, I'm always stepping on it to pass one car and then slowing down behind the next one. Those bursts of speed use plenty of fuel, Mr. Williams. In fact, that kind of driving may cut your gas mileage in half. And here's another thing. People like to pour on the power going up hills. That takes extra gas, too. Yeah, I suppose it does. Also, the road surface makes a difference. For instance, gravel gives you greater rolling resistance, and that cuts your gas mileage. Oh, yes, I've always felt I didn't get good mileage up in the back country. All in all, Mr. Williams, steady driving on a smooth, level road will give you peak economy every time, because your engine does less work. Oh, I see, Joe. But how can you apply those ideas to city driving? He's got a point there, Tech. What with all the traffic lights and stop signs? Watch Joe bring up steady driving again. Well, Mr. Williams, the more you stop and start, the more gas you use. So, in the city, you've got to expect lower mileage than in the country. But... You don't have to pour it on getting away from the lights, like that kid over there. Uh -huh, but suppose you're in a hurry. Well, look at him now. He's only one car ahead of you at this next light. And let me tell you how bad his gas mileage probably is. He's getting only about three miles a gallon when he guns it wide open and low. You're kidding. No, it's a fact. You see, on any car, your low gear is a power gear. It's designed to give the car that big push it needs to get rolling. In order to do this, the engine has to run faster, and that actually takes a lot more gas. And even in second, Mr. Williams, he'd only get about five miles a gallon. And in high, if he pushed the accelerator down to the floor as soon as he got in gear, he'll only get about eight miles to the gallon for a little while. And then what does he do? He slams on his brakes and wastes all that power at the next stop. Gosh, I guess you're right, Joe, but... In the long run, wouldn't you get places faster driving like that? Not by much, Mr. Williams. Just to save 10% of his driving time, a start and stop driver will double his gas consumption in the city. So you see, steady driving really pays off. 
It's just like pushing your lawn roller, Jack. How do you figure that? Well, it takes plenty of work to get it rolling, and you waste a lot of work when you have to stop. But when it's rolling on the level, it's a cinch. So you think I could improve the 10 miles a gallon I get in the city, hmm, Joe? Well, let's take a test on the way back and see. Are you ready? Let's have the mileage, Mr. Williams. Uh, 12.3, Joe. Right. Now, just take it easy and sort of plan to get to that light after she changes and the traffic is moving. By gosh, I made it. Good work. Now, keep a little behind the pack so you won't have to use your brakes and waste power. This is what you call plan driving, Jack. Yeah, I see what you mean, Tech. How am I doing, Joe? I'm pretty good, Mr. Williams. You might try getting out of the low gears a little sooner, though. You see, the best you can get out of low gear is about seven miles per gallon. And in second, the best is about 10 miles per gallon. So if you use your low gears moderately, just enough to get you up to driving speed, you'll save plenty of gas. And another thing, Mr. Williams, I noticed that you pump the accelerator when you're waiting for the light. Yeah, I know. I've got to break that habit. Well, get set to read the mileage again. Ready? Finish. Uh, 13.9, Joe. Let's see. 13.9 minus 12.3 gives 1.6. Why, that's 16 miles to the gallon. Joe, you've made a convert. You've certainly convinced me that steady driving is the answer for gas economy. Well, that's right. But don't let the test mislead you. You won't be getting gas mileage like 21 on the highway and 16 in the city under ordinary driving conditions. Why not? Because you use more gas for stops and starts, acceleration and idling, things you didn't do during the test. And that's not all, Mr. Williams. There are still other tips on economy I'd like to give you. Well, I certainly want to hear them, Joe. But uh, right now, I'm due at the office. Your boy Jack can pass on those other economy tips to me later. But don't you worry. I'll be back. You've got a steady customer. Glad to see you anytime, Mr. Williams. Goodbye. Goodbye. Say, Tech, what other things could we have told Mr. Williams? Cold weather driving, for instance. That's right, Jack. Cold weather always knocks your gas mileage way down. What's the weather got to do with gas mileage? It's this way. Low temperatures affect the lubricating oils and greases in the car. Cold oil and grease are stiff, and they cause drag in your whole car until they warm up. And another thing. When the engine's cold, you've got to use the choke to get it started. And if you have a manual choke, and leave the button pulled out too long, that'll use more gas. Tell them about those cold weather tests, Joe. Sure. One car that was checked in near zero weather gave less than half as much mileage for the first mile as it did after six miles when the car warmed up. Say, that's kind of tough on the fellow who drives just a few miles a day, isn't it? That's right, Jack. His car never really gets warmed up enough to give good mileage. Well, couldn't he idle the motor to warm it up? It wouldn't make much difference, Jack. He'd waste just as much gas during the idle as he'd lose by driving with a cold engine. But don't get discouraged. There are things you can do to improve winter fuel economy. For instance, instead of idling a long time on a cold morning, get underway as soon as the oil gauge shows normal pressure. Yeah, you get just as good mileage because an engine under load will warm up faster. And on cars that have a manual choke, you can save fuel by pushing it back in gradually as soon as the motor begins to run smoothly. But about the most important thing is to change over to light oil and grease when it starts getting cold. And that's about all there is to winter fuel economy. But there are a couple of all-year-round economy tips to remember, Jack. Things like seeing that your brakes aren't set up too tight. But wouldn't a driver notice that right away? Not always. The brakes can be dragging so slightly the driver wouldn't even know it and still cut the mileage several miles per gallon. And watch the tires. If they fall below recommended pressure, you get more rolling resistance, maybe enough to cut your economy two miles a gallon. Heavy loads like trailers would use extra fuel too, eh, Joe? Right. It takes extra power to pull big loads, especially on hills. Well, those are the major points on fuel economy. You think you could take care of your neighbor's problems now, Jack? Gee... I'm not exactly sure, Joe. What's the matter, pal? Did we miss something? Well, suppose the gas test proved that the car was at fault. 
Why, that's when we turn the spotlight on engine performance, chassis friction, and things like that, my boy. Meanwhile, folks, just remember, if you want power and speed, it's right there under your foot whenever you need it. But if you want to save fuel, plan your driving along three lines. Steady driving, normal speeds, and moderate use of the lower gears. Then you'll be the world's best gas saver. <laughs> <laughs>